These eight 17 amp hour AGM lead acid batteries make up my main 12 volt battery bank here in the solar shed. They're all connected in parallel with their negatives, all common together on this negative bus bar, and their positives all individually fused but then connected together on this positive bus bar. The idea being that that should give an even charge and discharge out of each of these batteries. These batteries were recovered um, on a maintenance program for some uh, uninterruptible power supplies, so they had about a two, three or three year life before I got them, and they're now two and a half years old here in the solar shed, and I think they're starting to show a little bit of age. A couple of years ago, I also started salvaging uh, lithium-ion 18650s, well, from discarded laptop batteries, and uh, building little systems like this. This is a 7S 8P pack, because these are all in pairs, and, uh, well, this made up what is roughly a 24-volt system, which was charged via solar and uh, used to power some lights here on the shed. But I made a video at that point pointing out really that um, lithium ion doesn't really work in my opinion to replace a 12 volt lead acid system. Uh, I'll link to the video up here but basically I surmise that you need well three and a half lithium cells to make a reasonable 12 volt pack and of course you can't really be cutting these in half but there again it does mean three and a half times two, seven S as I've got here, it does work for a 24 volt system. So that's why I settled on 24 and I've not been able to use lithium cells in my 12 volt system here in the shed. Then a couple of weeks ago, out of the blue, I received an email from a gentleman called Nigel who said, Adam, I've been watching your channel and I've got something which you might be interested in looking at. And as politely as I could, I bit his hand off. And luckily, Nigel didn't live too far away from me and we were able to meet up in a service station car park and exchange goods. Now look at these beauties I've just picked up, 12 of them. So these lithium ion phosphate cells here are difficult to get in on camera on my bench, but they probably weigh a couple of kilos each. Uh, size wise, we're talking ooh, uh, 20 centimeters there or eight inches in old money by 11 centimeters four and a half inches roughly and uh, they are if i can fit that in about two and a half or six centimeters deep so uh yeah they're fairly large certainly the largest lithium cell i've ever played with so if we look at the uh, typical maximum charging voltage for a uh, life epo 4 cell that's 3.65 volts and usually a minimum around the two and a half volts sometimes you can take them a bit lower but uh, anyway um so with one single cell 3.65 volts with two cells in series uh, well we can get 7.3 volts three cells just under 11 volts four cells 14 0.6 volts and that number's rather convenient a minimum of 10 volts as well there but if i look at a, a typical solar charge controller manual here and this is taken from one of my ep ever solar charge controllers you can see the sealed battery type well it charges to 14.6 volts on an equalization charge the maximum cell voltage here for a 4S LIFE EPO4 system. But it only does that once every 28 days, this particular EP Ever Solar Charge Controller. Most of the time it will just charge to 14.4 volts, so within that maximum voltage. And uh, it will only take the pack as low as 11.1 volts as well as a standard sealed uh, lead acid battery so these life epo 4 cells well can pretty much be uh, swapped in in a 4s configuration 
Uh, you could also choose to go down the gel profile, which won't charge uh, nearly as high. It won't do a monthly equalization charge, and it will charge a bit lower. Now, that might make people a bit more comfortable about keeping these batteries well within their, their, their maximum voltage and also increase the amount of cycles you get because it will reduce the amount of wear on the cells and uh, yeah so 14.2 might work quite nicely and it's still got the same low voltage disconnect voltage of 11.1 volts so yeah 4s seems to be a viable solution now originally I was told that these cells here are these ones there are Winston uh, WB LYP 60 AHA 60 amp hour cells and uh, the indeed the measurements do pretty much tally up now interestingly uh, the operation voltage here it says between 4 volts and 2.8 volts but we'll come back to that 4 volts in a minute the 2.8 volts well 2.8 times 4 I think is still within 11.1 volts my solar charge controller's lowest point so that should be okay um, internal resistance less than half a milliohm uh, they can be discharged at quite high rates um, 7,000 cycles at a 70% depth of discharge. That's pretty good. Much better than lead acid. Can have quite a low charging temperature and quite a high one as well. So, uh, yeah, less than 1% uh, self-discharge monthly. That's quite impressive. Um, 2.3 kilos, I think that does tally up. Now, back to that 4 volt maximum operation voltage if we look at uh, the graphs on the second page of this data sheet uh, we can see here we have a charge characteristic curve uh, and as you can see as the charge comes up and then we slowly get up to i'd say 3.6 3.65 volts at this point depending on how quickly you charge them uh, this states that 3.65 volts i'd say there is a hundred percent charge capacity and they only go up to four volts when you take them somewhere like 110 percent of their capacity so uh, i think reading between the lines here you don't want to take them up to four volts although that is an operational maximum but it also shows that there is a bit of headroom if uh, well if you slightly overcharge them uh, but yeah 100 percent i would say is 3.65 volts now, I said I originally thought that these were the Winston LFP 60 AHA cells until I took off some tape that Nigel had carefully put across these two terminals quite wisely uh, and can see that this actually is branded as, let me focus, branded as CALB, C A L B, and not Winston at all. So I looked again for data sheets and uh, found the following one which is for a CALB CA60 FI AHA um, cell which I have seen pictures of in this sort of blue ribbed package rather than this grey sleek one that they seem to be doing more recently but again this is a 60 amp hour cell um, 3.2 volt um, typical um, nominal voltage sorry maximum charging voltage 3.65 volts um, and uh, roughly the same sort of size and the same sort of weight so hopefully whether it's the uh, the Calb or the Winston well these are 60 amp hours I believe so now I need to get on to testing these cells so i need to uh, connect something up here to both charge them up fully and discharge them uh, and test them possibly on one or two cycles and for testing the capacity i think i'll use the zke tech electronic load and charger uh, i don't quite remember the model number for this but it will charge at about five amps i think and discharge at something like 25 watts. It uses a four wire measurement and seems reasonably accurate, but I can also automate the charging and discharging uh, via the computer. Um, and you can see some nice graphs of the charge curves and discharge curves 
of these cells. Now that is a COM port, it's not USB. It uses a funny adapter. I don't know why they used a mini USB connector, but anyway. Uh, so yes, I think I'll use that to test all these cells and that'll keep me busy for at least a couple of weeks, I would have thought. So fingers crossed after testing all the cells, I will have 12 good cells that I can put together into a battery pack. I'll need to think about how I'm going to connect the series and parallel cells uh, to each other and I'll also need to think about fusing and safety which will include a battery management system. These cells also need to be kept in balance, just like my lithium-ion 18650s. Uh, but I think I've probably got a solution for that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.